Alright, not only we got the new presentation for the next few months, but we also got more reveals for Dogovan. So let's begin. And it isn't one that I was expecting, by the way, to be honest. But anyway, let's go. So first off, let's start off with the product stream with the premium restriction list. And I have to say, they are pretty okay. Stunverse has been hit to one, but for some reason, Katrina has been back as unrestricted. Keep in mind, this is the Japanese list. And then for V, I have no idea why they really had to kill Bluish Flame, but Aglovel is not one. I get it's a powerful card, but Aglovel to one just hurt Bluish Flame flames a lot when they already lost Percival. So I would say they probably need to errata the bluish flame cards just for bluish flames. The Colossus has been banned and for some reason the Bermuda card is back to unrestricted. And then for D, Swirler and GG has been choice restricted because of early game aggression especially when you could just call Swirler, Soul Charge, GG and GG will just draw and then Swirler will just get power so it's just three grade one attacks on the first turn. This one in particular doesn't really matter to me too much but I do understand and why a bit and then we also got the choice restriction of eva and combined rusher even though combined rusher could be played in pretty much any brand gate deck but overall this isn't too bad of a restriction next we got more collapse which i'm not going to care about because this is a manga collab too and it's a series i'm not interested in and the artworks don't really matter to me and these are going to be alternate artworks for certain cards so moving on not only that if you're interested like me we got the overdress plus will dress soundtrack slash insert songs finally Finally! And then we got Manga Reprints and Festival Collection. This I like. And then for more units that are being revealed, first off for set 10, we're gonna get Dragoon Mask and we already saw box art so this was already kind of a spoiler ahead of time, but nice to see a clear art of it. And it looks awesome and I'm looking forward to it because I played Dragoon. Now for set 11, which is a cross epic set and encounter, I don't know why we have a Greed on Mask here. The only thing I could come up with why they would put Greed on Mask here is probably because they don't want to put too many mask units in one set. I mean, I am. I'm glad to see Greed on Mass, which is gonna make it become my third Dark State deck to have a Mass unit, or actually all my anime Dark State decks, because Gear Chronicle can't really count fair. So I'm afraid of Mask of Hydrogram going up in price even further. But what really excites me is that we got new special decks for Graham Grace, Favnir, and Orphis Regis, which basically is special 6, 7, and 8. For the Deer Days units, I don't completely mind it, considering that there hasn't been a ride deck for it, and now we actually got a ride line for it, for one of them. Hopefully we will get Favnir, but that will be smaller with the Dokoban. But not only that, we got Orphis Regis, which has been a while, so I will take the reprint for it, even if I already have the build deck already. And it doesn't really upset me either, because I do understand why they're doing it, and in a way, they might make an Orphis Mask unit in set 12. So this is in a way as a preparation to set 12 if they make an Orphis Mask there. And I do have to say, this is not entirely a bad sign to see, since I do wish that they do make deck products. And before we go to Dogovan, here's the calendar. So besides set 11 being at June, along with Tolkien Rambu, which I'm not going to care, and the new special series decks being at July, we also got the plan for August for set 12 and September for set 13. Pretty short gap between the two, I'm going to have to say. They haven't really done this for a while. I think they should really do like three, four month gaps for each set, but I think this might be something really big then. And now to the Dokovan stream itself. First off, we're going to start off with Graham Grace's official Rylan. Here's the starter, starting Magic Sariri. Moving on to the Grade 1 way, K-Power with Escission Angel, which has the skill of Auto, when rode upon, draw a card, choose one card, and discard it. Yeah, sure, okay. The main good part about this is basically it's a ride deck generic card that could be played for any unique Grade 3 boss units that doesn't have a ride line. Which goes for the same for the Grade 2 with Tangi Power, Divine Sister Gatu Baski, which has the skill of Count Vanguard. When you would ride from your ride deck, you can Soul Blast one instead of discarding a card from your hand. Just like the Grade 1, you could play it with any unique Grade 3 for Cater Sanctuary for the ride deck. And just in case what you guys forget Graham Grace does, first off it's a grade 3 with 13 power and the skill is Count, Vanguard, when you Persona Ride, the Persona Ride increase also applies to your back row, which of course is pretty nice, and then the second skill of Act, Vanguard once per turn, costs Counter Blast 1, Soul Blast 1, draw a card, choose a card from your hand, call it to back row center rear guard, and until the end of the turn, that card can attack from the back row and plus 10k power. So it, like I said from the original, it loses its own power, but the back row gets the power with an extra attack, which is 
not entirely too bad. An endured skill, at the end of the battle that your back row sent a rear guard attack, you may put that card to soul to draw a card, which clears up the back row card and then you can call another one next turn practically. Not bad for a deck concept like I said in the original. And then we have a powerful friend promo, I'm just not going to go over the skill but just know that it's a really good powerful friend card. And then for the festival collection stuff, we finally got our lyrical ride deck fodder card, that being coloring one's wish flash blank, which is of course grade two with tiny power, has the same ride fodder skill of when discard from hand during ride phase cost. Soul blast one, put this card to the bottom deck and draw a card, unique skill. Auto, when placed on rearguard, you persona right this turn, cost kind of blast one. Choose one of your vanguards until the end turn it gets this ability. Count vanguard. All your front row units get some 5k power. Honestly, that's not entirely too bad. Especially when there's a good amount of lyrical decks that can do superior call in mid-battle or restand mid-battle, so that's just more multi-attack. And we got restanding Vanguard 2 that applies as well. Not super OP or anything, but pretty decent. Finally, snuggling up to the moonlight, add to heat. Grade 3, Dragon Power and Skills. Count Rearguard Guardian. If your opponent drive checks or damage checks a trigger this turn, this card goes with 10k power and 10k shield. That's not too bad. I mean, basically, it's a counter to a trigger, but it relies a bit of RNG, but that's not too bad. But the second skill, Auto Rearguard. At the end battle that this unit was boosted, costs Soul Blast 1, perform one of the following abilities. Choose one of your rear guards in the same column as this unit and return that to the hand, or costs remove from play one over trigger from your drop zone and then choose one card from your hand with grade less than or equal to your vanguard and call it to rear guard. So it either bounces something, which is the more likely one, or two, the one in a time thing, rare chance, where you get one additional attack. Honestly, I kind of like this card for being able to counter triggers, especially the power increase and all that, but the second one is kind of okay. Not entirely my thing though. And finally, before we go, here's the official deck list for Graham Grace so far. We got few new cards and they haven't been revealed yet. Hopefully, they will be something awesome for the deck. So that's it for the new Graham Grace ride line along with the presentation, along with some lyrical stuff. What do you guys think of it? The presentation, nothing super duper exciting for me yet, other than the special deck sets. Nice to see Greed on Mass, even though it's one set early in my opinion. Dredgeold Mass I'm looking forward to, let's see what does it do. And for Lyrical, it's just whatever. We're eventually going to see those eventually. And as for the restriction list, I will say it's not too bad. Hopefully the English one doesn't actually kill Bluish Flames because I really want to play Bluish Flames, but Bluish Flames has lost Percival. But anyway, other than that, that's it for this and see you all next time.